up everybody welcome back to another video here on the simply car things youtube channel as always thank you so much for tuning into today's video and before we dive into the topic of the bmw s55 crank hub issue if you guys can go ahead and smash the thumbs up button on this video as well as subscribe to my youtube channel down below if you have not done so already your support is very much appreciated now with all that being said let's get straight into it the bmw f8x platform and the s55 engine have now been around for ooh, like seven or eight years almost now. Uh, you know, the platform debuted in 2014 and now we are in the beginning of 2022. So yeah, we're coming up on about eight years, which is pretty crazy to think because in my eyes, I still view these as pretty new cars overall, even though they have aged a fair amount already. And of course, in 2022, the crank hub issue is no secret that plagues the BMW S55 engine. Now, if you guys are a little bit more curious as to what the crank hub upgrade is, how it is installed, what the actual issue is, how does the failure occur. I have a ton of very informative and in-depth videos that explain all these issues. I will go ahead and link those in the description box and I will also throw cards up at the top of the screen so maybe you guys can get a better understanding of the issue and educate yourself a little bit more uh, prior to watching this video, which is gonna be concerning when is an appropriate time or a good time, I guess you could say, to upgrade the crank hub on your BMW M3, M4, or the M2 competition. Truthfully speaking, this is a, a tough question to answer because the crank hub issue for a lot of people is almost like discussing politics. There's a lot of controversy surrounding it. Some people just genuinely do not believe it's an issue. They've never experienced it. Maybe their car is completely stock. Maybe they've even been running a tune for a super long time on the stock crank hub with no issues. And if that's the case, and hey, that's awesome, and all power to you, uh, but in my personal opinion, I definitely believe the crank hub is a real issue. I'm not saying that to spread fear or misinformation, but I just know from personal experience, I know too many people that have encountered the issue, granted with modified F8XM cars that have basically either damaged their engines like the cylinder head as a result of the crank hub spinning, or they were lucky enough to just need a simple retiming of the engine, they went on and upgraded the crank hub, and end of story. My personal belief, and again, this is just based off of my personal anecdotal experience, so if you do not value that type of information, or if you do not find that type of information to be credible in your own opinion, you are someone that wants to see data or hard numbers or stuff like that, you probably just wanna click off this video because that's not what I'm gonna be providing. But with that being said, personally, I think if your M car is completely stock in the sense that you have not done any sort of power modifications to the vehicle, mainly in the form of a tune, whether that's an off the flash or a custom tune to the vehicle, I think you are totally in the clear and I think like 99.9% .9 of the time you will be just okay. There have been some like horror stories and some information spread about uh, stock F8X M cars having the crank hub spin, but in my personal experience, I have never seen that happen, uh, even at the various shops that I've collaborated with in the past, um, with a lot of my friends that I've seen that I have dozens of friends and, and people that I know personally that own these cars and do drive them very hard, whether that be with extensive modifications or on track or a combination of the two. And I think if you are planning on leaving the car stock in terms of the powertrain, you will be just fine. Now, when we start to get into off the shelf tunes like stage one, stage two mapping, it starts to get a little bit iffy. To be quite frank, I know a lot of people and I have seen a lot of people that have ran basic stage one or stage two maps or just off the shelf tuning uh, without any issues to the crank hub or the motor itself. And the car seems to be holding up fine and that's great, but there are so many variables that you need to consider when factoring in whether or not this has the potential to actually induce the crank hub failure on the car. You have to think about the type of driving that you're gonna be doing. You also have to consider the amount of driving that you're gonna be doing. You also have to consider other modifications that are done to the vehicle. Some people also claim that the transmission type on your M car, whether it's the DCT or the six-speed manual, may affect the likelihood of the crank hub failure 
here happening, although I personally don't know how true this is or if it's even a verifiable claim to make, um, but some people say six-speed manual cars are less likely or less prone to actually having the issue occur as opposed to the DCT, and that's mainly due to the speed in which the gear changes occur, uh, specifically with the downshifts. If you are going to be driving this car very hard, whether it's roll racing against your buddies on the highway, taking the car to the drag strip, or if you're the type that wants to track your car, taking it to the circuit, going for all out lap times, or whatever the case is, I would definitely encourage the crank hub to be done because you're actually pushing the car very close to its mechanical limits and you are putting a lot of stress on the drivetrain and specifically the powertrain components, uh, which again, in my opinion, can definitely increase the likelihood of the crank hub failure occurring. I think a common misconception is that a lot of people view the crank hub as a wear and tear item, which is not the case. Just because you might drive your car a lot does not necessarily mean that you're going to be wearing out the crank hub over time and that's going to increase the chances of the crank hub failure occurring. But what can happen is the more and more you drive the car, that's just one more chance of that actual issue coming into play. So if you are someone that is going to be tuning the car and then putting a ton of miles on it, you know, and also paired with the fact that you're gonna be driving the car hard, I think that's another thing to consider and I would also encourage you to get the crank hub done. Now currently my car is running a boot mode stage one off the shelf flash. Personally, until I get the crank hub done on my own car, I will not be taking the power any further on that vehicle um, just because I want to ensure that I'm protecting the car and already as it is, it's somewhat risky. Um, in my personal opinion, to be running a tune without the crank hub. And on track, I will be flashing the car back to stock power levels. I will not be running it with the stage one tune because I just do not want to risk having damage to the vehicle's engine. From what I've seen in my experience, the crank hub issue genuinely really becomes a common occurrence at a certain power level. And that specific power level comes into play with anything after stage two, specifically with the type of fuel that you're running. Almost every person that I know that has not gotten the crank hub done on their car that ran E85 or some sort of ethanol blend with their tune, at some point ended up spinning the crank hub on their car. Whether that was running E50 with a custom BM3 flash or if it was a full-on custom tune running full E85 on the stock fueling system or maybe they were running pure turbos in conjunction with race gas and meth or whatever I mean which at that point I don't know why you wouldn't get the crank hub done it just makes no sense in my opinion but the crank hub spins at one point or another and this was evident in another video which I will throw a card up to right over here with my buddy Gabe he goes by Blues Clues M3 I was actually in the car and I caught on video the crank hub spinning on his F80 M3 at the time he was running full E85 on the S55 motor with a custom BM3 flash. The car was making probably like 560 to 600 wheel horsepower, somewhere in that ballpark in terms of power. So if you are someone that is planning on taking the power anything beyond stage two, I would 100 and 10% say go for the crank hub fix and make sure you get it done prior to taking your power anything beyond that. I think at stage one, you're probably gonna be okay, although still I think there is a little bit of a risk that you could be taking. Um, stage two, you're definitely starting to push things in terms of the chances of the issue occurring. And then anything beyond that, I think in my opinion, again, just my subjective opinion, it's just a matter of time before the crank hub says bye-bye and you have the potential of you know, having the cylinder head damaged because you get bent valves. In terms of crank hub solutions, I would personally look into either the SSR four-pinned crank hub fix or the Vargas spline lock, which is another very popular one that a lot of uh, guys that I know personally have gone with um, through Studio RSR. So I think both of those solutions are very viable. They're very proven in a number of different scenarios and just hundreds of different F8X cars that have been running out on the street and track. And so that's personally what I would vouch for. But again, I would encourage you to do your own research and if you want some more context as to what this issue does, how it may manifest within an F8X car and what the installation and labor process involves, I have tons of videos, which again, I will have linked in the description box down below. So with all that being said, guys, I hope that helps answer your question. I know the answer is a little bit vague and it's definitely not a straightforward answer, but that is the best explanation that I can provide to you guys as my viewers. So. 
With all that being said, if you guys could go ahead and please smash the thumbs up button once more, subscribe to my YouTube channel if you are new here and if you haven't done so already. Again, I really appreciate the support. We're almost at 60,000 subs, so thank you guys so much for the continued growth on this channel. And with all that being said, I will catch you all in the next video. Take it easy, my friends. Bye-bye.